What's up, my favorite people? So today we're gonna talk about the five things that I hate about the Range Rover Sport. Now, to be fair. fair. To be fair. To be fair. To be fair. To be fair. There's only one thing I really hate about the vehicle. The other four are more annoying than anything else. All right, so let's start the countdown off with the thing I hate about this vehicle. And I'm sure you probably guessed it. It's a problem that has plugged so many Range Rovers and unfortunately a very real part of having a Range Rover. And that is the electronics. Unfortunately, Range Rover is known for having problems with its electronics. And sadly, this one is no exception. Now the car was leased brand new, but within the first couple of weeks, I already saw some glitches in the electronics. So while the glitches were nothing serious that I had to take the vehicle into the dealership for, they were glitches that I have never seen before on any vehicle. Certain things like the top screen would get fuzzy when I plugged in my phone to use the USB for Apple CarPlay. Also, if I'm switching stations really quickly, the screen will slow down, it'll freeze, it will flicker. I don't think there's a problem with the electronics. My best guess is that the processor is not up to the task of the computer itself. Oftentimes, there's a noticeable lag between pressing something and the screen actually responding. For simple tasks like swiping through the different pages, the processor handles it great and it actually moves very smoothly. However, if you ask more of it, like swiping quickly or going to the lower screen and swiping up through the different menus, tapping too much or too quickly, it kind of wigs out and it's like, whoa, whoa, that's it's too much work for me. And it will kind of just, it will slow down. And it also has just blanked out for a second as well. So I don't know, it's been so long and this has been a complaint for so many Range Rover products and even Jaguar too. I don't know why they don't just overhaul the inner workings of the system. It's a great system, it works well, a bit redundant on the buttons, but that's okay. The screens are absolutely crystal clear, but the lag and the glitches in the system just make it really a headache. Number two. Now remember, number one is the only thing that I actually hate about this vehicle. The other four are more annoyances and things you should know. So the second thing that I hate about this vehicle is it looks like every other Range Rover. Seriously, here in South Florida, Range Rovers are everywhere. In fact, there's one right there, right on cue. When you're spending this much money on a vehicle, you want it to stand out. You want it to feel a little bit special. And that's hard to do in this vehicle because the Range Rover Sport has pretty much looked the same for the past six going on seven years. Here's what I mean. This is a 2013 Range Rover and here's a 2014 Range Rover. Okay, big difference. You can see the differences. From 2014 to 2017, the Range Rover looked like this. In 2018, they updated it to look like this, the Range Rover that I have now. Can you see the difference between the 2017 and the 2018? In a still image, yeah, you can pick out the differences, but driving down the road, very, very hard to do. Now, I know these are first world problems, but whether you buy a Range Rover or a Corolla, nobody wants a car brand new that looks just like one from three years ago. So if you have a pretty new Range Rover, here's a quick way for you to tell yours from a 2017 and older. First of all, you wanna look at the front headlights. The old style has these LED dot almost, and the new ones actually have an LED strip. Another thing you can look at is the fog lights. The old ones have the fog lights higher up in the bumper, and the new ones, they're really low in the bumper. That's a dead giveaway. If another Range Rover Sport pulls up beside you, it's pretty damn hard to tell the difference if it's a new one or an older one. I would suggest you let them drive off first and check out the back for more clues. Here's some dead giveaways. Those LED dot headlights, they actually continue from to the back for the tail lights. The new ones have an LED strip. And the biggest way you can tell is the exhaust. The 2017s and older have circular tail exhausts and the new ones have more of a rectangle. Number three, this vehicle has ultrasonic parking sensors 360 degrees around the vehicle. 
And what I really love that Range Rover allows you to do is to activate them and deactivate them right from your home screen. We've all been there, pulling up to the pay window of your fast food restaurant and getting close so that you can reach and pay and your parking sensors go off. And they will stay going off until you either put the car in park or drive away. With this, you're able to turn it on and turn it off independently. And I think that is fantastic. What's not great is that when these sensors get dirty and it doesn't even have to be a lot of dirt, they'll activate. I'm particularly finding this on the left-hand side. When I make a left-hand turn, that tire comes out of the wheel well and it activates the sensors and I get this continual beeping that I'm about to hit something when there's nothing there. It happens when I'm backing up, it happens when I turn, make a left-hand turn, not just U-turns, but any turning of the left hand, more than 25% to the left, it will activate that. The only thing I found to eliminate this problem is really just keeping the car clean, but it all comes down to whether or not I get dirt on that sensor or not. I'd like to know if you guys are having this problem too, so leave me a comment and let me know. Number four. So the fourth thing I hate about this vehicle is there's no storage in here! It's a big vehicle and there's nowhere to put anything. Now, part of this is my fault based on how I spec'd it. Biggest thing is, there's a cooler in here. So I guess there would be, you know, storage inside here, but because there's a cooler, there's no storage. And you can open the top part. Oh, there's a mask. I was looking for that. And there's a little, I guess there's a writing tab. I don't know what this is, honestly great place for a wireless charger if that's what it was but that's not what it is then you've got your cup holders here they're actually two different sizes they do a really good job of holding things there is a cell phone holder in the middle but there's only one cell phone holder so I guess you and your passenger can flip a coin there's a little change thing here I don't know I also found it's really good for putting your AirPods Pro in and then there's actually a hidden compartment at the very bottom you slide that back and you reach all the way down which i don't know what you're going to put in here and use while you're driving there is a usb if you remember from my last video there's a usb inside here uh, but it's not accessible at all while you're driving and that's it you've got door pockets here but they don't fit a cell phone so again you're stuck with this one <laughs> colder here the side pockets for the doors, they can barely fit a regular bottle and they don't fit at all a one liter bottle. There's no storage at the bottom here. There's no storage under here. There's nowhere to put anything. You've got these two um, glove box, but that's it there's really nowhere to set anything and really with this light color leather i don't want to even set things on top of here i don't dare put anything on top of the dashboard there's no storage there's no storage in this car so if you're looking at this vehicle and you've got a lot of stuff you bring a lot of stuff with you this is something you definitely should take into consideration number five so the fifth thing that i hate about this vehicle is that I don't have a number five. I really love this vehicle. However, if I had to nitpick, I would say the ambient lighting. See, I paid more to have this ambient lighting package and all I got were some lights under the dash and the seats that are very Fast and Furious boy racer looking and this LED strip here. At the very least, I would have liked an LED strip along the dash in the door panels, front and rear to give it a more cohesive look. If you don't get the ambient lighting package, you're not missing anything. And honestly, I cannot recommend getting it until Range Rover does a better job of ambient lighting. There you go, guys. There are the five things that I hate about the 2020 Range Rover Sport. They're not big problems, but if you're looking at making the investment and getting this vehicle, you should definitely know them. If you guys have any questions about the vehicle, please leave me a comment below. I've got more videos coming, so be sure to subscribe. Thanks, guys, for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.